Hello, scientists. Welcome to episode 16 of Sassy Science, where science is sassy. I am going to attempt to make my first EduCreations product. And today we're going to talk about the periodic table of the elements. First thing I want to say is that the periodic table of the elements is organized into groups, periods, and atomic numbers. We're going to talk about those things, those three, groups, periods, and atomic number. The first thing we're going to talk about is the atomic number. If you'll notice, um, these little number, one, then over here is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, you see the pattern? 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. They are arranged by increasing atomic number on the periodic table. The atomic number increases as you go across. And the atomic number is the number of protons. Remember all those atoms that the scientists broke everything in the world down into all these atoms, and then they had to organize them. So they said, okay, all you atoms with one proton, you're going to come over here, and we're going to call you hydrogen, and we're going to say your atomic number is one for your one proton. All you atoms with two, we're going to put you over here, and you're going to have the atomic number of two because you have two protons. So... I need you to now, for your homework, um, I want you to um, go to your notebook, and I want you to write this, atomic number equals, what did I just say? The number of protons. So you need to write this in your notes. The atomic number equals the number of protons. That's the first thing you need to write. We'll call that number one. All right. I'm going to go back over here. All right. Um, now, the elements that are in the same column, like up and down, that's called a family or a group. You can see the word group up here. A family or a group. So, like, this is a group. This is a group all across. These are groups. And one way you can remember that is you can think about a group or a family. Families stand together. So it's kind of up and down because they stand together. That's just a way for you to memorize that. And um, groups or families have similar properties. You can see there's 18. There's one, two, three, four, all the way across to 18. There's 18 groups. Um, so now I want you to um, get rid of this. Come over to your page, and I want you to write two groups have similar properties. Similar properties. Back over here. The next thing we're going to talk about is the periods. You'll see the word period over here. Let's make that blue ink. Period over here. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven periods. And periods go across, across the table. So like what I just circled there is period four. This is period six. And I'll tell you a uh, way to remember that is think about, oh, man, second period is just so long, and those are long, okay? Maybe it's fourth period for you that's really long, whichever one, as long as it helps you remember that the periods go across. They're really long. Second period is extra long because of SSR. Whatever helps you remember that, okay? Those are called the periods. Um that. All right. Um, you'll notice that there's kind of, oops, let me, there's a, like a zigzag line that goes across here, and you'll see that on most tables. 
and that zigzag line kind of makes a separation in the table. And everything that is on this side is called a metal. And that's the first group we're going to talk about, the metals. Okay? They're over to the left of the zigzag line. And metals have similar properties. They are good conductors of heat. They are generally shiny. Several of the metals are attracted to magnets and can be made into magnets, so they're described as magnetic. And all the metals except for mercury are solid at room temperature. And so these to the left over here are metals. So let's go ahead and go over to your page, your notebook, and let's write a few things about metals. Left side of zigzag line, that's what the ZZ is going to stand for, zigzag line. They are generally shiny, magnetic, and good conductors of heat. That's why we usually don't set a metal spoon in a boiling pot of water because it's going to conduct the heat and burn your hand. So good conductors of heat and electricity. And I can't remember what number we're on. I guess this is three. But as long as you have this written down, that's all I care about. All right, metals, left side of the zigzag line, shiny, magnetic, and good conductors of heat. All right, let's go back to the periodic table. And we'll see that um, I'm going to draw the, oops, I'm going to draw the zigzag line again. And you'll see that to the right of the zigzag line are the nonmetals. And in general, the nonmetals have the opposite, oops, sorry, my handwriting's not the best, generally have the opposite properties. They are poor conductors of heat, and they are brittle and can break easily and are dull. So let's go ahead and go over to our page, and we'll put non-metals. The right side of the zigzag line, they are generally poor conductors of heat. And they are usually dull and brittle, which means they can break apart easily, crumble. Okay, you'll also notice that on um, the nonmetal side are the biochemical elements. All of the biochemical elements are nonmetals, and they are pretty important. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, here you see the uh, picture that's going to be one of our Just the Facts. It was also in the last video. But it's the elements needed for life, the biochemical elements. And they are carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. You need, what you see here is what you need to write down in your notebook. And over here, you'll see I have C for Carlos, H for Has, N for New, O for Orange, P for Puma, S for shoes. That's just a little silly way to help you remember them. Carlos has new orange Puma shoes. Or C-H-N-O-P-S, Chinops, whatever helps you. Remember carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. The biochemical elements, they're all nonmetals. All right? They are needed for life. These are the six things that we are needed need for life. And as we have talked about, carbon is in all living things. You need to be writing this down, too. Carbon is in all living things or recently living things. 
And remember, not everything with carbon is alive, but carbon is in everything that is living or recently living. Carbon. You need to know that. All right, let's see what's next. Um, back to these. Um, let me clear this. Um, let me clear this. All right, so the zigzag line, sorry, I'm not doing that very well. Um, right along the line and in this particular um, table, they're colored this orangey color right here, right along the line. These are called the metalloids, metalloids. And they have, let's go ahead, I'm going to clear some of this. Metalloids, you need to write this down have properties of both metal and non-metal. They're not quite one or the other, so we call them metalloids. Have properties of both, so you need to write this down. Properties of both metal and non-metal. All right, and then the last group we're going to talk about is, let me get rid of this, back over here, is, uh, get rid of that, is the noble gases. They are group 18, the noble gases. And I read it said that um, they were considered noble because they didn't like to react or interact with other people and they were very stable. These are the noble gases. And so what you need to write down for them is that they are very stable and non-reactive. And they are group 18. Group 18. Noble gas is very stable, non-reactive, group 18. Over here, that's, this is them right here. This last row, the group. Remember, they stand together, noble gases. All right, and hydrogen, you might be looking over here and saying, why is that its own color? This is really interesting. Um, I read it said that it was the simplest element. You know, it's only got one proton, so its atomic number is one. And the chemical properties of hydrogen differ greatly from those of the other elements, so it really can't even be grouped into a family. And it said that hydrogen makes up more than 90% of the atoms in the universe. Interesting. Hydrogen makes up more than 90% of the atoms in the universe, but it's rarely found just by itself, just hydrogen. Most of the time it's mixed with oxygen, and we know that H2O is water. So that's where it is most of the time. Um, but I just thought that that was interesting, that hydrogen atoms make up 90% of the universe's atoms. Really quickly, I'm just going to show you here, when you look at each cube, um, they're usually up here is going to be the atomic number, which we know is the number of protons. The symbol, we've talked about the symbol, one capital letter per one element. The name, and then down here is the atomic mass. Now, each table is going to be a little bit different. In fact, you'll see on this one, here's the key, and... They have the atomic mass up here in this corner and then the atomic number up here. So whichever periodic table you take a look at, you need to make sure that you are reading it correctly. All right, I hope this explained a little bit about the periodic table. We've told you most of what you need to know. Listen to this as many times as you need to. The things that I wrote, you need to write down in your um, notebook. Have a great day. Bye.